name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome this weekend to all of you once again. Have joined us to celebrate the beginning of the season of that time waiting, of watching, a time of hope, a time of calling on God in our hearts. And so this season of Advent we pause for a few moments. We wait, we call on God, and most of all we journey with a hope, a hope for a better Advent, a better community, a better world. Maybe think of the times already in our lives when other things have taken over our journey, our thoughts, our reflections. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> May Almighty God have mercy on us all. May He forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, that resolve to run forth to meet you, Christ, with righteous deeds in his coming, so that gathered in his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our hearts against fear? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. At your presence the mountains will melt. No ear has heard, no eye has seen, any God which you act like this for those who trust you. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebel against you. We were all like men and clean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves, and our sins blew us away like the no one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of For you hid your face from us and gave up the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our Father. We the clay, you are the potter. We are the work of your hands. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank Him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you so that you will not be without any gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ. And God is faithful. The Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know what time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master of this house is coming. Evening, midnight, cockroach, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all. Stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend we begin the season of Advent. Who can believe that we had barely finished celebrating this Christmas season? Earlier this year, when the world began to turn upside down. Since then, so many people have been sick. So many people have died. So many others are suffering the loss of work, home, family, and livelihood. I think as we listen to that first reading of Isaiah today, he seems somehow be living in similar times to us, crying out to God to come down and set things right, asking God to tear the heavens open and change everything around him. And I think a lot of us could feel quite similar to Isaiah. Don't we just wish we could find the right way. Don't we just wish that researchers could be inspired? More hope for the weary doctors and nurses. More comfort for the sorrow. Just like Isaiah, I'm sure we feel, God, why don't you just come down and fix it? But I think the reading of Isaiah, in this the first week of Advent, if it teaches us anything, is that God is here and offers us hope to bring us round the world that we live in. These few weeks of Advent are a time in which we're asked to watch, to wait and have hope. And God is telling us that hope is the most important of all the things that we have. To never give up, to trust in Him, to get closer to Him, to journey closer with Him during these few weeks before we remember His birth. God knows the state of the world we live in. And God knows just how much we need Him and His presence right now. But I guess the real test for us like has been for the last few months of this year, 
like it is for these first few weeks of Advent, is how willing are we to trust? How ready are we to walk closer and to go forward with God in these coming weeks? To not give up, to not give in, and to have hope. As I said earlier on, the one thing that Isaiah teaches us, regardless of who we are, regardless of what kind of a world we live in, our God continues to be there. The problem is with our lives, our journeys, and our own situations, we sometimes might find it hard to find Him or to walk with Him. So as we begin these four weeks of Advent, let's just ask God to put a spirit in us that brings us closer to Him, to be more alert to His presence in the world we live, to be more ready to ask for trust, faith, and hope. So as we begin this season of Advent, a season of hope, so let us ask God to give us that hope that trust, that waiting, and that watching that we truly need. Like Isaiah, we really need him here right now. Like Isaiah, what we need most of all is faith, hope, love, and trust. God, give us your hope is coming out. God, our Father, as we begin this season of Advent, we cannot help but think or reflect on the world that we live in. The suffering, the pain, the loneliness, the isolation, the communities, the people who struggle to find hope in these difficult moments. We ask you for the God of Advent Touch our hearts, touch our lives, and give us greater hope this Advent season. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray and remember those people who in our communities are weary, are tired, especially the nurses, the doctors, the carers who are giving so many hours to give others a better life better. Lord, bless these carers. Give them strength and courage in their true vocations. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray and remember those who have died, those in our parish communities and those in the world that we live in. We pray especially this week for Dennis King, for John Whelan, for Noreen Walker, and for all those who have died recently, for their friends and their families, for strength and comfort. Lord, hear us. During this time of Advent, we think and reflect very much on Mary, the mother of God who had so many struggles and frustrations and difficulties in her life and journey, but yet she never lacked hope. As we pray to Mary this weekend, we pray asking for some of her trust, her faith and her hope, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you for loving us. Keep us close to you this Advent season. And help us to strengthen and build up our hope in you. This we ask through Christ our Lord.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and sin. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, with Francis, our Pope, and all people who are present. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your we pray especially this weekend for Dennis King, for whom we celebrate this Eucharist. We also remember John Leland, Noreen Wong, all who died recently. Have mercy on us all, we pray, we Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the years, that we may merit the glorious eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so together we say, through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and now with the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let you offer each other a sign of peace, within your own bubbles, within your own homes and communities this weekend. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb.
Thank you very much for joining us. God's blessings.